Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Watch Robux. My name's James, and today we're doing another locomotive review. This time we're looking at the new Depo LSWR M7, which they've only released this year. And it's looking like quite a nice engine. It does feel much heavier than the old one, which is very nice to see. But first of all, let's get all the boring stuff out of the way. So first of all, the product code. Let's get it in focused. Eh, close enough. So that is uh, 2S-016-009. A N-Gage uh, M7, which is a 044. British Railways lined black with running number 30248. And it has a minimum curve of radius 9. So we probably must go around everything which isn't Kato track, which is uh, the very fine, well, not fine, the very tight Kato track. But uh, yeah, very nice model. Uh, inside you get the usual bits, the uh, warranty, which we won't read, the instructions, which we'll have a quick look at. Uh, unpacking and handling your loco, basically uh, be careful. Uh, lubrication every 50 hours, or light lubrication, running it in basically an hour in each direction. Uh, on the back, it does tell you about where to fit all the detail bits. It's only a few little bits, uh, basically um, some uh, dummy screwing couplings and probably a few other bits. On the inside, it does tell you well, more lubrication, basically there's two little oil wells in the bottom there. And also fitting a DCC decoder because this does come in two varieties. Uh, DCC fitted, so you don't have to worry about this at all. And also DCC compatible. So you have to, well, if you want a DC, you just run it as is. Or if you want to fit your own decoder, you have to unsolder a hardwired blanking plate, and then pop in your own uh, decoder. It, attaching to the same wires, then pop it back into the uh, coal bunker because it's back here. Now I would show you it, but getting that coal out is quite a bit fiddly, so I don't recommend uh, doing it all too often. But yes, it's a hardwired uh, blanking plate and apparently this is Dapple's best method of it, uh, making it DCC compatible. And you get two little accessory bags. Uh, this has just extra Couplings, which I won't look at. Uh, this has the uh, coupling rod tool, so you can un uh, remove coupling rod. Has more fake cup uh, well, alternative couplings, and you also have the fake uh, screw link couplings to use as detail, which I won't bother. Anyway, let's have a look at how much this weighs. So, have a quick look. Yeah, that's zeroed and we pop it in there and it is uh, 43 and a half grams so i don't remember how much the original one uh, weighed i would say probably about from what i remember it's probably around 30 grams so this is still a significant about uh weight increase probably about 50 percent and you can actually feel it it does feel much heavier than the last one and this is nearly the same weight as two mark one coaches Anyway, on to the detail overlook. Now, first of all, I can already tell that the tampo printing is quite clear and very legible. Uh, there have been some ways that's a bit off, you know, slightly tilted, and I think this one is very slightly because that lining looks slightly higher than that one, so it's very, very slight. Uh, and only on the front lining, the back one looks perfect. Let's see, but otherwise it's nice and clear and very legible because I can tell that does say 2P down there. Uh, let's see, it is all black livery because uh, I did get the uh, BR black one because, um, well, it was second hand and it's cheap, so that's me. <laughs> uh, let's see, the detail on the uh, water tank uh, covers, they look quite nice. Uh, the whistle and the safety valves are picked out in... Uh, Brass gold colour, but I do have to say that this uh, whistle does look quite delicate, so do be careful of that. Uh, the handrails are a painted, or at least a black wire, instead of the original ones on the original version, which were just uh, black plastic wire. These are metal. Uh, I don't know if 
Now that's plastic, so all the weight is mostly on the inside. Probably in the sides here. Normally best place to put them. Uh, the front detail, uh, you have a lot of riveting. Much more riveting than the original one. So you've got riveting around the smoke box, you've got riveting on the buffer beam, and you got the uh got uh, the coupling hook down here, you also got the uh backing pipe there, and also very clear again uh tampo printing, very build display down there, not quite as clear, but well it's tidy and it's crisp, but it's too small for me to read. Uh you do have interior detail. However, it's going to be very difficult to say on camera, but you have got a reverser in there. Just about to see it. Right in there. You may just be able to see it. Yeah, there you go. You've got the reverser and also what looks like a brake handle of some sort. Unfortunately, I can't open it up and have a look, but nice to see it's in there. And I would assume that there is more interior detail as well. And on the rear, just to tidy it up, uh, coal looks quite nice. Uh, plenty of space to add your own if you want to. However, you will have to add it on top of this coal because this does cover up a decoder. So if you remove it, you'll have to uh, find somewhere else to put the uh, blanking plate or the decoder. Uh, let's see, the lamp brackets are all older detail, but they still look quite nice. More buffer beam riveting. Um, the coupling hook again, and also the... Uh, uh, vacuum pipe as well. Now to finish that up on the bottom, uh, first of all, NEM pockets either end, always nice. Uh, brake rigging as well. No traction tyres, so all the extra pulling power will come straight from the axle locomotive, so no help there. Uh, little details on the side here, quite nice to see. I have heard that, well, I have heard and also have seen people. Uh, not all that happy about the uh the flange here is a bit more it's not quite as nice as what it could have been this is basically very similar to the old wheels where it has a very white uh large flange so not the best there but still it does run just about uh the front wheels do actually look better than the original ones however it as with the original version the body is actually about uh, i want to say about five mil too high on the axle chassis because uh, these wheels are meant to be inside the splasher well half in the splasher so i'm not going to really dock any points off because it's exactly the same as the original but it's still not quite pretty typical uh, removing the body i have no idea how to remove the body i would assume it's uh, probably the screw here but uh, i'll have to have a look at that at some point but uh, yeah, and also ha they have uh, updated the pickup on the uh, trailing wheels because beforehand it used to be um, just pressing against the sides of the um, wheels, but uh, now it seems to be a bit more robust system. That's pretty much it really for the model. Uh, there is a few other things which I do want to point out, but I will get to that a bit later. Anyway, let's get on to the turntable and I can tell you a bit more about the prototype. Then we can get it onto the layout and see how well it, uh, it runs. So I'll see you in a bit. The LSWR M7 class is a class of 044 passenger tank locomotive built between 1897 and 1911. The class was designed by Dougal Drummond for use on the intensive London network of the London South Western Railway and performed well in such tasks. Because of their utility, 105 were built and the class went, with, went through several modifications over five production batches. For this reason, there were detailed variations such as frame length. Many of the class were fitted with push-pull operation gear that enabled efficient use on branch line duties without the need to change to the other end of its train at the end of the journey. When first introduced to the LSWR, several of the class were allocated to work the semi-fast passenger services between London and Portsmouth, Exeter and Plymouth, and Bournemouth and Weymouth. However, they were drawn from these duties after a high-speed derailment near Traverse Dock in 1898. 
following criticism by the Board of Trade Inspector about the use of fund-coupled locomotives on our services. As a result, the class has become synonymous with local mainline and branch workings, as well as London suburban services. The class was gradually replaced in the South East England during the late 1950s and early 1960s due to the introduction of further electrification, new lightweight standard steam classes, diesel centres and diesel electric multiple units. By the end of 1963, the majority that remained were based at Bournemouth to work for Swanage Branch. Most of the class survived until 1957, but over the next seven years, the remainder of the class were withdrawn as part of the modernisation plan. Two examples have survived into preservation, and both were built by Nine Elms. Right, here we are, the new M7 now on my layout, and I have got my eight Mark 1 coats of test rake all ready and waiting. But first of all, let's look at the slow speed of the engine. And I do have to mention this is under DC, so under DCC it will operate slightly differently, but this is still hopefully better than the original. So let's see how well it runs. So it will keep going up to it starts. Oh, that's a very nice, very nice. And in reverse. So it's not a perfect cool, but compared to the other one, which uh, shot off like a rocket, Ooh, it's still there. Yeah, I'll definitely take that over it zooming off into the distance. So it's definitely a much better motor in there. So let's give it a quick run round. So it's popped up to a decent speed. Yeah, it's definitely an improvement over the last one. There it comes. It's a very nice smooth runner. Very happy with that. Hmm, very happy. Now then, let's see if we can pull eight Mark 1 coaches. Let me just try and pop that on. There we go. Right, this was uh, 43 and a half grams. So uh, we'll give it, we'll round it up to 44 grams just to make it a bit more easier. So 44 grams, that's just under two Mark 1 coaches. So one, two, three. This is about. Ooh, I want to say four and a half times the weight of the little M7 here. So that's 200 grams. Uh, yeah, about four, about four and a half. I'll go with that. At least definitely four, four times the weight of the uh, M7 here. So let's see how well it couples up and also pulls this amount of coat. So let me just pop it in the right. Ooh, not quite, it needs a bit more force for that. Try again. Definitely got there. And I had a bit of a wheel slip, so it's maybe telling. But off the start on the flat, it can do four and a half times its own weight with eight Mark I coaches. Now up the incline, it will struggle. Slowing down. It's still going, but slowing down. Actually, I'm going to help it out a bit. So uh, let's take off. Let's take off two coaches. Ooh, come on, off you go. So on the flattened level, it will do eight mark on coaches, but up an incline. Uh, I'll just keep you over here. Incline. This is now six. 
So I'll give it actually I'll, I'll give it a run up. Um, <laughs> So now to six. It's getting there. It is struggling. But it is getting there. Oh, it's finally made it. Yeah, I'd say six is probably pushing it a bit. But it can do six up a very slight incline. But on a flattened level, it will do eight happily. So let's do one more go. We'll move one more coach. you there so once more that same power yeah, it's happier but I'd say it's still probably a bit much Put it for a stop. So yeah, that was not quite as hoped, but still better than the original. Because the original, you wouldn't even get two up there. Well, you would get two, and that's it. Two and a uh, parcels van. But because um, that's how many I'd normally run it with. But uh, with the new ones, I'd say I'd say four and a parcels van. So. Pop you off and pop you somewhere. We'll give that a run round later. But yeah, I'm gonna say four Mark One coaches and a parcels van. It will do a very slight incline, which is I'd say is it's at least twice as strong as the original. So that is still it's better. So, but there are a few issues with this particular engine. So we pop you over there and you over there. Now, when this came out, there happened some quality control issues with the engine. Because, uh, first of all, the... Well, first of all, that uh, whistle, which is delicate, keeps blowing over. There we go. Right. Quality control issues. First of all, the lining, that's a minor thing. Uh, sometimes the roof has been popped off, maybe pushed up by something, and as uh, so the body has not sit level. I know it's sitting high but it's not sat level. Like I said you can see a very slight rise here compared to that side. That's because these back wheels are pushing up a bit too much I think. But yeah let me just look yeah you can see the buffers here they're not leveled well, down here it's about a few mil yeah, it's a very few mil difference but considering this is from from one of the main manufacturers it is a quality con uh, quality control issue uh, I think they have been sorting out the more recent uh, let me just zoom back out uh, the more recent production versions but if you have got an earlier one or in my case I think this was an earlier one which I've bought second hand uh, yeah, there is something to be aware of. So, yes. But, compared to the original, it is better. It is more expensive than the uh, original one. Uh, the retail price for the uh, for DC versions is about it's about £90, which isn't too bad. And that's a decent, It's I want to say it's a decent runner. It's definitely better than the original, so it is more decent. So it, it, it's better than the original, so I will give it a pass at a decent runner. 
uh, quality control issues, yes. Uh, the DC seed versions, I think it's probably about... I'm going to put 120 to be on the safe side. I can't quite remember the original price of them. But it, it's an improvement. I will, I will give it back. It's an improvement. But hopefully, after time, DAPO will solve the issues with it. But I don't know when. But that's it for the video. So do let me know what you think of the improved DAPO M7. I do like it. I said I do own uh, two which are as is and uh, a couple which are used as something else. Uh, and they have been poor runners before. But this is improved from beforehand so I'm willing to give this one a pass. And it is so that they are learning. So, but do let me know what you think. Do you have one of these new M7s? Does yours run better than mine? Worse than mine? Does yours burst into flames and somehow, no, when something looks at it? But, <laughs> but do let me know what you think. And uh, do let me know what you think of the video. If you do like it, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, well, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And that's going to be it from me and also the new M7. So I'm going to... So I'll see you all again next time. So take care now and uh, let's see if it does get up. It'll just fall. Without slipping. A decent speed. Yeah, it seems much happier that. Bit of slowing, but still it's happier. Anyway, see you all again next time now. Take care. There it goes. Bye-bye <laughs> now.